This is High Vibe TV, the uncensored, guided, and community-based video TV network with content recorded and live streamed from the world-famous High Vibe TV studios. High Vibe TV delivers daily, weekly, and special programs focused on astrology, spirituality, history, community, and more. This is not your run-of-the-mill astrology and tarot. This is the future of spirituality, illuminating new ways the collective can step into the dawning of this exciting new dimension. The highest vibe is truth, and the truth always prevails. Download our awesome app on the Apple and Android stores so you don't miss our notifications with special spiritual insights curated to the energy of the universe. Search for us on your TV with our exciting TV apps on Apple TV and Roku. Catch our vibe on your computer where you can join in on the live chat with our amazing community and blog. Watch spirituality like you've never seen before. Download our apps or go to highvibe.tv. Subscribe now. This is where we're going to move to uh, Spiritual Daddy Overtime. We're just going to cover this for the next 15, 20 minutes. So if you stay with us, I hope everybody has a good week, of course. Um, but we are now going to move to about this financial crisis situation, astrologically speaking. So one thing I want to remind people is that the North Node's in Taurus. So, you know, it is literally about remembering the foundations and the things that you have. Again, if you're reliant upon outside energy, right, an investor, a venture capitalist, Silicon Valley Bank was an investor bank. It's where 50% of all startups, they keep all their money. So it's one of those things to where if you are in reliant upon this outside source, especially if it's not true to creating something, right? It's like you're relying on your mom to give you money. But that's just because, like, you know, you don't want to do anything. There's got to be a, a reality, physical aspect to it. It's like what you're able to create is where your power is. I just put up a tweet today saying, well, since VCs are going to be so scared, and they are terrified right now, they don't know where to put their money. They don't know what stuff to do. They have to look at their portfolios all differently. It's like if you have a great idea, you have to create it yourself. And, and, and this is one of those moments where you have to also be, you know, I hate to be honest, but Taurus is one of those places where it's like, you're either valuable or you're not based upon what you make. That's the hard thing. You know, like if, if you're short cutting yourself and saying, I'm only worth this and that's all that I ask for in my career or that's all that I want to do. That's a financial crisis in your own self that you're creating because you're expecting and you're hoping for things to be different or big change to happen. Or if you're in reliance upon some outside entity to keep you alive and that isn't going well, that's a sign that it's bad, just the same way that the banks are going through. So if you're in a bad connection or a bad shared income or a bad relationship where it's like the com commitment and what I get and what you get and all that, and it's bad already, like you've already lost your own value, you've already lost your own worth, then of course it's gonna come down. And especially with this Mars T-square, you know, it's one of those moments in Gemini that's going to be squaring Neptune and everything. It's like all the subconscious shit over the last five months is coming up to bubble and burst right now of truth, but also what's not spiritually connected, what's not in alignment, right? So a lot of these startups, you have to remember, we're all the bet that eventually they'll become a Fortune 500 company or the bet that eventually that they will be a huge company. But what people weren't paying attention to is 50% of this bank was holding all of the big companies that interact with all your apps and all of your stuff that's happening in the tech world. So people don't realize at the same time, like my payroll gusto literally sent me a thing like, yeah, we're part of it, but don't worry. We're figuring things out to move money. Right. But it goes all the way to Airbnb is part of this. I put it on my Instagram, the 30 companies that are just that you know of. That's not including all the other 2,500 you don't. But all the third parties that are software companies and all these tech companies that are behind everything, yes, the, the government is going to secure deposits for the depositor, not the bank. So they're not bailing out the bank, but they're bailing out the depositor past the limit of $250,000. So what happens if all of our banks go down? Do you think they would do that for all of us, but they're doing it for only for Silicon Valley people? It's kind of one of those situations where it's like a bailout without looking like a bailout, which we know how bailouts turn out. They turn out bad. 
So it's one of those moments to where it's like, again, if you're in reliance upon this kind of like, well, this is taken care of for me. You want to make sure that you also have your talents and abilities and make sure that you're shored up with that understanding within yourself. And also, this is a matrix. This is a time to be in your deepest spiritual truth and on the spiritual mission. You wouldn't set yourself up for a spiritual mission to fail. The only time it's going to fail in your life is if you're really connected to something that honestly is not part of your spiritual mission, that's diverting you from it farther. What do you think? I mean, I think it's something that we've been talking about as astrologers for quite some time now. You know, we kind of had to wait till these nodes got all the way to the end of Scorpio and Taurus to see. And we talked about Pluto finishing in Capricorn a lot. Like we, I, it, it's not a big surprise to me. Like I kind of thought it might happen a little bit sooner over, you know, say the last year than it did. But you know what? I'm not super surprised. And I think it's just the dominoes are going to start to fall. It's been about knowing that you can do it right? Having the capacity to create. That's everything right now. And there's going to be ways to play in the matrix and like still do it. But it's also knowing that you have the power to do it instead of just the full reliance that something else is always going to show up and do it for you. Like, I mean, I think of like ETFs in the market where you just kind of give your whole portfolio to an ETF and they manage everything. Like that's probably not going to be a thing anymore. Like, I think we're just starting to see dominoes start to fall. And I think that that Silicon Valley bank was a good, you know, first example, but it's not like the last one, you know? And I think that, you know, we talked a little bit before the show about, you know, the other banks, um, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, how they're not looking very good right now. And there's almost like this herding over to like, just like JP Morgan or like maybe one other, but, and I think it's so interesting that they're getting people to go to kind of one place and especially because it's JP Morgan because JP Morgan has the monopoly on the gold and silver market so the precious metal market is extremely manipulated and suppressed by JP Morgan will that eventually go up i don't know i don't it did know. rally Be today what was that it did the, the precious metals rallied today and the stock market did not yeah, so it might, but it's like you're always going to have to kind of figure out what the system's doing, but the system is about to start looking way different than the game we've ever played or ever thought we would play. And it's it's just part of life right now. But I think, yeah, we're just at a place where we're seeing the dominoes fall and we're seeing that just because we felt so safe in a bank, or maybe not everybody here, but a lot of people felt so safe putting their money into some bank that... Maybe that's not safe. Maybe that's actually the place that tries to control you and kind of manipulate you more than it already does. So I don't know. It's very interesting. We're going to see where it goes. I think that that was just like the first domino to fall. It'll be interesting to see what dominoes start falling after that one just got pushed over. Do you think there's going to be more dominoes that fall? Well, yeah, already the dominoes are happening. But it's like weird because it's not surprising because it was all happening for the last year, especially through these Mars square Neptune transits. It was like SVB. But people have to realize is every bank, you put a deposit in, they take your money to go make money with it, to make money. That's how a bank makes money. So they invest that into tr different assets, money market, right? In the stock market or bonds, which is what they did. Bonds, which bond... And the yield curve has been so bad because they, the Fed raised the rate. So they couldn't cover the cash because once you put it in a bond, it's stuck in the bond. People have to buy those bonds, but they have negative yield. So they're, they're, they're losing money on your money. And that's what happened was they went out and they tried to do a big sale on their stock to just, they were like, we just need to cover 1.8 million billion in assets. And when we do that, everything will be fine. But then that's when all the VCs started calling each other and say, bank run, bitch, bank run. We, they're, 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 not, they're not fucking as secure. And that created a bank run. And that's what happened. And boom, stopped it. The FDIC came in. The feds came in, shut down the bank. Then this weekend, there were a million phone calls between Congress people. And they can't, nobody wants to be part of the bailout anymore, right? So the Fed is the one stepping in. And the Fed is securing deposits over 250K 
for SVB people. But I think that's what's fucked up. What happens if that happens to any other bank? Are they going to do that for every bank now? Is the FDIC raising the limit to unlimited amount of what your deposits are? One of the smartest things that you can do is remember that there was a bunch of VCs I follow that when they do these big deals, they make sure that you only put the money in 250K at a time. So if you're going to give somebody a big loan for 10 million for a startup, you don't do it with here's 10 million. You do it in here's 250K, here's 250K, here's 250K, right? So those are all secured, right? But the Fed is almost like what they're not talking about, that you think your money's safe and all the FDAC and all this shit. If they're giving all that money that would be secured by the banks, that's insurance, right? It's insurance that the banks pay. So the banks are using their insurance from JP Morgan to Bank of America to all of them that they've paid that the Fed's using that money just on this one bank. <laughs> think about that. Yeah. What happens when it all falls? The other thing is I know people are like, well, I'm going, look at Bitcoin. Bitcoin went up to 24K today. It went down to 19 and it's up 24, right? It was a huge swing. And then gold, silver, all these things started pumping, right? But it's a centralized system because where's that money going to go? Unless you're really using crypto with your own fucking, you have to have your own ability to have control of that crypto, not on a centralized market. Coinbase was part of, this fucking SVB too, right? There's not many places. Binance, the way that we're dealing with the Chinese and we're dealing with all that, do you really think that they're going to allow soon? TikTok was part of SVB money. To me, it seems like it was all planned, right? It's one of those things to where it's like, unless you have your own cold storage of your crypto, I don't think we're going to even find a way for people to understand how to trade that shit for a while. Most people don't have their own cold storage. Most people don't know how to use Ledger. Most people don't have to know, to know how to use the encrypted parts of that and keep their money on there and, and, and then also use the Bluetooth aspect. And if there is electrical problems or if they do go to a CBDC, which is what President Biden just ironically at the end of December signed into law to start letting the Fed start to implement and try. I mean, it's one of those moments to where... where people have to have Bitcoin or have that in order for you to exchange it. But most people won't. So most people are, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, well, and it's not going to be like, oh yeah, I'm putting my Bitcoin in to CBDC money. That was the other thing is stable coins, 25% of stable coin from Circle was in SVB. So that's why stable coins went down to 91 cents on the dollar. So the crypto market is not your safety security. And I know that there's a lot of people who are saying that it is, but it also is the end of Pluto Capricorn and Bitcoin came out with Pluto Capricorn. So it's one of those moments where I think we don't know what the safe place is for the money. Anybody who says they know it's safe is lying. It's one of those moments to where there's going to be another currency or another thing that we're going to call value and money that will pop out. And we don't know what that is yet. So don't trip and know that anything that will take you down at this moment is where you are not spiritually aligned for what you're connecting with. Period. It's just going to come down to whether or not you think spiritually it's okay when the universe is going to be like, no, nope. I've always said this about anything in life. When things are going bad in the financial aspect, you can't make the money you want and you start stressing and you start tripping. It's because you need to look around the environment around you. That's what comes after Taurus is Gemini. Like, what's the environment like? Is the environment good? It's not. Here's the truth. This is why your money sucks. So it's like one of those moments where it's like, are you in a healthy spiritual environment? Are you with the energy that's really aligned with you spiritually or not? Because that's what sucks us dry all the time. And that's what South Node Scorpio does. It's a vampire that you don't know is fucking sucking all the blood from you. And you think it's great. And you're intoxicated by it. But really, it's taking away your life. So... It's one of those moments to where you have to pay attention to what you're committed to and what you've actually shared your energy in that's involving a bank, that's involving a person, that's involving all the other aspects in your life. And especially because it's a Pluto Aquarius coming, it's about the collective. Are you doing things that's really for the collective or is it for selfish gains? During the Oscars, I was so happy to watch the winners. It was Brendan Fraser for The Whale. That was such a spiritual movie about humanity. And then everything, everywhere, all at once is a spiritual movie about what we talk about. Multi-dimensions, connecting to your higher self. It was like anything that was trying to go for its own gain in the physical reality, lost. The actors lost. The movies lost. The directors lost. Like Elvis didn't win shit. 
It's just like we already know who Elvis is and somebody else playing Elvis and doing a movie about a guy who's already dead. I'm sorry to say that's just like, it's, that's very Scorpio. Like it's not Taurus. It's not original, right? The whale was original. Everything everywhere uh, at once was original. Even the screenwriters and even the directors never believed that they could get there and they think they're fucking kindergarten teachers and shit. You know what I mean? So it's like one of those moments to where it's like Saturn and Pisces on top of it is anything that is not spiritually in your life. If you're doing it for a gain of security in a way that really will compromise some of your spirituality because you're not willing to look at it and you're, you're playing for the matrix life and you're trying to have this matrix life thing, you're going to lose bad. You know, you have to trust that spirituality and the spiritual ways of doing things are going to be the only way through this. And that's what Taurus is about aiming your life towards the heavens to create something. If you're connected to something where it doesn't want to create a heaven and it doesn't actually want to create the same value that you do, Uranus is going to beat you in the ass. Because even though the North Node is in Taurus, Uranus is there. So it's like, oh, yeah, your value is different than that. We want to both do this, but you don't want to do that. Well, oh, fuck. You know, it's like I'm having a kid with my fiance. We both wanted to have a kid. So a kid's going to work out. But if one person was like, eh, I don't know about that. You know, we both want to move to the same place. We both want to do this in the same energy. You have to find energy where you both want to, or you, you and whatever the energy is that you're pouring your life into has to be on the same value or it will be horrible. You know, you can't have anybody who's like, I don't know if I want to do that too. We'll just deal with it later. That's the problem, right? That's the same way of how the banks are. Well, we'll deal with it later. We'll, we'll just figure it out later. You know, that's not, that's very scorpionic. Like hopefully we'll come to the same page eventually. Not going to happen. You know, so especially with Pluto about to square the nodes. It's, it's, it's pretty gnarly, right? Like, like this South node Pluto, not going to fucking be nice. Saturn at, at least is aligning with the nodes, but it's Saturn and Pisces. So it's better be really spiritually all true and not fake. And you know, what's the hardest about Saturn and Pisces is what you think is true will hit you hard of what's an illusion if it's really not spiritually true. And, and so that's what's going to be kind of hard is I think that, you know, you might think in your head or your ego that something's good and right. But I use the Oscars as an example because it was really easy to see that everybody who was there for other reasons didn't win. But the people who really weren't even there ever believing that they could get an Oscar won. Right? So I use that as kind of like the test right now of like, you know, those who, those who are going to be okay through this, they're on their spiritual mission and there's no question about whatever they connect with in their life, their money or anything, to places that are doing something that is spiritually good and putting them into the collective. If, if it's pulling you more away from the collective, if it's pulling, that's Pluto and Aquarius coming to square the earth. If it's pulling you more away, that's going to be a problem. You know, like you're just, you know, deconstructing yourself, like, for your own gain of what you want in your own mind. And then the other part is whatever the counterparts are in your life, are they really on the same page? I think that's going to be what's scary. Are they on the same page? I think that people are going to realize like, uh, well, I mean, we are on some things, but not on all. Like it's not about all, but it's more about like some pretty deep values. You know, if you want to get here and that person doesn't want to go there, what are you doing? Same thing with your bank. I want to put my money in there and I want it to be safe. Well, we, we want to do it with it this way. Okay, I guess I'll accept that. You'll accept that? You got to look at your own personal life first. Instead of the outside of the bank. Pluto's always about the outside, right? The outside institution, the outside financial institution, the outside bank. Let's not forget, everybody right now at this moment, we already are at a horrible position in the government where the government isn't paying bills already that they need to do. And that's about people's retirements and 401ks. Now the Fed is going to save all these really high-end brokers because they think it'd be too bad for the economy, right? That, that have money in there. They're not going to save the bank and they're hoping for somebody to buy the bank. And even Elon Musk said that he wants to buy the bank, right? So basically he can own all the tech, right? And all the ideas of the tech. But it's one of those weird moments here where it's like, okay, the government's wanting to do all this shit, but it's like, let's not forget that there's a government shutdown coming because they have not agreed. Biden wants to spend $7 trillion on his 
plan. Republicans don't. So the party shut down the government. So all the things that you rely on, the mail, all, like, all these other entities, even if you haven't got your tax returns yet, they're trying to tell people, oh, yeah, your tax return, blah, blah, blah. Pfft. My retirement's okay. My 401, that's the place to look at, you know? And I think it's one of those hard things because sure, it's easy to say, I'm pulling all my money out and I'm putting it into crypto or I'm putting it into gold. Well, how are you going to pay your bills that you still have to pay? You know? And it's also one of those things where you can lose money by just having, well, I have a Coinbase card, or right? that's not a centralized thing that can just, as we've seen with Voyager, as we've seen with FTX, as we've seen with all these other things, just in one minute go away. So, again, I don't think that there is some answer. I think it's more spiritual, and I think it's more of like, is it really robust wherever you're putting your energy? And is it creating something, or is it, are you losing your own value in your own life by where you're going? Trying to leech and hold on to something that you don't want to lose. You don't want to have that kind of attachment where like, I can't lose that, you know? Because then there's, there's a huge problem. Yeah, I would say um, to add on that, I think you're 100% correct in everything you said. But when it comes to like wanting some like safety net or a safe spot to put, like we don't know. And that's the thing that we have to be okay with, but it's not gonna come down to like knowing necessarily what it's gonna be so you can front run it. This isn't like, I guess some people might wanna look at this as like a, a get rich quick thing because a, you know there'll probably be a way that some people will acquire wealth through whatever transition this is, that always happens. But it's more about the physical what kind of talents do you have? What kind of physical things can you provide? It's more about what do you have to offer in your environment that have value. So it's not so much about having this store of value. It's what, what value can you provide? That will get you through wherever things are going. If you live in a place and you have something that the collective and the people in that area will need by a service, Maybe it's heating and air conditioning. Maybe it's going fishing to provide food. I don't know. It, you know, maybe it's underwater basket weaving for some people because in that environment, that's going to be gold. I don't know. We don't know yet, but it's about like, that's what I think the North Node in Taurus is about. It's like your capacity to find your talents and what you're good at and what you can build and create so that when things do go into some sort of a new financial place or a new system of currency or transfer of currency that you even if you don't have it or you didn't front run it that you can still create it because you have something that you can provide the collective with that we're always going to need because we're always going to have to work together somehow and that's the best form of trade is a service for value right yes that's my opinion it's also i think uranus and taurus saying that we all including myself and everybody else has to find different things to put out to create that are different than we're used to. So instead of looking at it of where to put my money, it's where to put your talent. Like you said, that's what like, exactly. Yeah. In a different way too. Like I have a huge warehouse here. It's like, well, I had all these ideas of what I could be doing. I could be servicing jet skis. Maybe I could be creating a press and creating something here. I've got the electricity. I've got the ability to do a full warehouse here. But it's also about what you have. That's the hard part about tours. So, you know, even if you might not have as much as some other people, your computer that you have is of ultimate value. Are you really going to try and sell that for some basic bullshit because of some desire that you want? When that's your creation method. Think about the stuff. This is not about selling this is about holding on to the things of value. If you're going to sell something, it better be to be, you sell something to buy something that's a value for your worth to create with. You really need that Xbox if you're out of money? Like when that could buy a laptop that's going to build a video or build, to you, this is where you have to throw yourself into realizing where you're at. And if you're also in a reliant place where you don't have all the money and somebody else is taking care of everything, that's the problem. That, that's where, uh, 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 because it's not a full commitment. 
you know? That, that, that's the thing. Scorpio deals with that commitment of marriage or whatever, right? That other step besides just the contract, that emotional commitment, like, I'm making a baby with my fiance, we're engaged. There's a whole like, okay, she does this, I do that. And there's been a set emotional and physical creating point to merge those things together. But if it's just a, a hearsay thing, that's scary. You know, it'd be like a roommate who's like, I'm taking care of all this shit, but you guys don't really have a contract. Those are the areas to be scary of right now. Because that's exactly what the banks do, right? Like, well, they said that they would hold my money, but they went and did this with it. They said they were going to take care of this. It'd be like your roommate saying, yeah, don't worry. I pay for the electric and you do this. But you guys don't have a contract. You don't have something. Boom. They didn't pay it. You know? Oh, I promise I'll always do this for you. What? And that's, what's, that's how the rug, Pluto needs integrity and it needs some sort of goal and basis point that's actually like, this is what it is, you know? And, and those are contracts that, you know, have to be connected on the Scorpio side with the Taurus side, right? The contract we have with spirit to create something for the collective. The contract that we have that if we're in a relationship, then there could be shared energy because it's a defined relationship on a deeper emotional, spiritual connected level that actually has a physical aspect to it. What are you creating in the relationship? that actually is something physical. That's why a ring, for example, is something that promises with, an, um, with a physical entity that you will be committed to that person. These are spiritual traits that go back beyond just the last hundred years of what you expect. Like, you know, if, if you're saying, I'm promising my love to you and I'll take care of this for you, but you're really not. Let's say you're in a relationship with a guy and he said he's gonna do all these things for you and pay for everything for you, but he hasn't put a ring on it yet. That's a problem. You know, it's not one of those times to where you can just be like, oh yeah, I'm just going off the trust of that. No, you need to have a physical understanding, right? Like, not a time to be playing around with, well, yeah, we're kind of doing it. It's like all in or not to create. You know, it's like one of those moments. And I think Brian said it best, what you can offer community and people around, but also the world in weird ways, right? Like what, what's going to be the breakthrough that you can be? And, and that forces you to step up your value and your self-worth and know how to project, produce yourself and make the, the energy wholesome and good and put it out. You don't want to be a copycat at this time. You want to be different. You want to be unique. You want to express your value. You, and that's what the throat deals with. So you don't walk into a bank and be like, can I get my money? He's like, no, that's my money. That's my value. That's my worth. That's how your relationship should be. It should be that concrete. That's how your relationship with your bank should be. Your relationship with your business, your relationship with your partners in business, your relationship with all the companies you work with. You need to have those convos and those talks because if they're all in the background and all like, hmm, maybe, I don't know, because that's the truth, even though, no, we had the talk. No, you don't have a contract with it. You don't have a spiritual contract. You don't have a contract in other ways. I mean, what are you doing? You know, at least I know I'm having a child with my fiance. Like, it's not like my name is not on all the aspects, including the birth certificate that's going to come out. That, that, that child is, we, we, have a, we have a contract by spiritually, but also more. So everything in life has to have like, an understanding, and it also has to have a physical representation. If you're, if you're throwing yourself to the wind and just, uh, it's okay. It'd be like saying like Jack and fucking Jack Sparrow. I'm going to make a contract with Jack Sparrow. He's promising he's going to take care of the boat and I can live on it. I mean, he might get drunk one day and change his mind. You have no contract. It's not like you're in love with Jack fully, but you think that you guys are best friends, but really not. This is where people start turning. And like I said, with Pluto and Aquarius and a lot of other stuff I've said, boy, oh boy, this is where people are going to start knocking on doors out of nowhere. Hey. And you don't want to be that person that has to go knock on doors. You know? I put that warning out for a long time. So that's, and I'm not trying to scare people, but it's just like, you didn't follow through on understanding like your Scorpio and Taurus things. 
especially if you have intercepted Taurus and Scorpio in your chart, boy, that, that you're, you're most aimed at right now, you know, or you have a very bad Venus and a bad, if your Venus is in a bad place or you have a Venus Scorpio energy or the ruler of, especially even the Pluto class I've been teaching, right? Your Pluto already is going to be hard if you do have the Moon in Scorpio, Venus in Scorpio, and it's going to be easier if you have Mars in Scorpio or Pluto in Scorpio. Already, you get a stronger Pluto score. Like, you have to remember that Pluto scores and what's going to happen on Pluto and transit and so forth is based upon how strong your Pluto is. Like, if you have a weak Pluto, and it's more than just, oh, I have a... Remember, Scorpio is ruled by Pluto, right? So it's like, the shit that's going to go down is based upon the Venus Pluto aspects of your, your chart, your life, the positions, how strong they are and understanding those things, how to weather these things and how well you are with value and desire and knowing how to get it and how to know where the boundaries are with it and knowing your values, not overstepping them or, or undercutting your values by making commitments that aren't worth it. Like you have to really understand these things to understand where we're at right now. And it's much more than the physical, but the spiritual that, Pisces is going to take away everything that's not spiritual fast. It's already doing it right now. So. Some deep shit. Very deep. I, have, I mean, talked a lot about contracts. That was like a prediction I made coming into this year was with the nodes shifting and the south node coming into Libra and Pluto degressing back into Capricorn at 29 degrees where it's going to square these nodes is that that's going to be a theme of this year is going to be contracts void. A lot of contracts, I believe, are going to be voided out that we've made a, some kind of a commitment to a relationship to could be with the system. So it could be contracts, business contracts, all the way down to personal life contracts of, you know, like you were saying, share an apartment with someone, I pay this bill, whatever. There's just going to be contracts being ripped apart in front of our face, in my opinion. We'll see if that comes true or not, but that's something that I was feeling coming into this year, knowing that was coming. And I think that also having Pluto come back to 29 and having the North Node come to 29 degrees of Aries, which is where we're going to see this solar eclipse in a month and a half, like this solar eclipse is an ignition point into a lunar eclipse in Scorpio that is like WTF, like what the fuck, into Pluto square the nodes, square that eclipse point. So yeah, I just think that, uh, yeah, like we were talked about and started this with, the domino has fallen and we're just going to see so much more fall and that's okay. I think a lot of people want it to fall anyways. So it's like, enjoy the show. Know that you, you didn't come here to not provide value to live like you did. And if you follow your spiritual path and if you stay committed to that, you're going to be just fine. No matter what you end up doing, you'll acquire value and you'll get into the right contracts because this is going to be about so much of the identification of wrong contracts that the only other option is to commit to the right contracts in your life and not faulty, fake, shady contracts with anything in your life. Yeah, which I think is based off Taurus, right? If it actually has value and worth. Right, because like that's, it's got to have that opposing point. So it's like the contracts where there's really no value and worth that's gaining for the collective in any way or creating something it actually has worth because that's the thing we could say we're creating something but if it doesn't actually have value or worth for the collective it's going to be just like that's what's going to be voided out is is the contracts that you think are solid oak when it's not solid oak like it's just kind of like more of a transfer of like exchange without a creation element that, that, that so i think you're right i think contracts are going to be voided out but pluto at the end of capricorn is like paying attention to who's irresponsible right like who, who who's not going to follow through on their end fully which right. ironically i think is going to be the government yeah definitely 
already is been you know what i mean yeah but I'm, I'm also trying to tell people to like look at the deeper inside because i think the government's also part of like we saw this in the last time that pluto was here right it was like well the government changed and went to continental in a war and that's the other thing is like i put up a thing about war bonds i've been thinking about that for a long time that came and that's like a kind of a propaganda thing where people could put their money to make money off the war but you know i think it's like that Pluto Capricorn shit is in your own life first and your own integrity. You know, it's like, that's why, you know, Michael Luton had put a picture of Pluto coming into Aquarius as a, a, it's like a girl with a box, like, ah, I'm moving in. But it's like, are you just taking care of the person and they're not doing anything back? They're not creating, they're not providing, they're not, you know, that's the shit that gets scary is, is you start to deal with people who need help, but they're not willing to do anything. And, there's a mismatch in the in, in the masculine and the feminine with this Venus Chiron, Jupiter Chiron thing that's going to last till next year when they finally meet back up again in Taurus. So that's kind of a scary point because those happen in the sign of the South Node Dispositor. So it's like, you know, like who, who's able to really like, you know, be equal and provide and, or, or are you taking on energy where you're having to do everything and nobody's doing the other side? Like that's where it gets scary, you know, so... That's the, that's the other hard part of this Jupiter and semi square Saturn at this moment that's happening. It's like one of those moments where we're trying to expand. We think our egos are again going way too far ahead without realizing the spiritual to connect with it. So, and especially with all the planets direct, it seems all good. But if you notice with all the planets direct, it doesn't feel like we're free. That's because we're really not. They're, they're, the, the planets in the back are still saying, way too much karma here you can't just move forward so it's not your typical all planets direct it's not at all you know and, and i think a lot of people are going to have you know reconsiderations here about sit situations you know it's like oh man i thought i already went through the change it's like no if it's spiritually aligned then it was the weird test is we have no way to know except through spirit making that call that's the crazy part and you'll know because your gut will be like, fuck. I already know, but I don't want to deal with it. And I'm just going to keep believing that it will be okay. The sac I thought it was weird. I talked all about last week, Jupiter and Chiron and the sacrifice that Jupiter, you know, forces Chiron to go through. That just, that just was happened in front of all of our eyes with the banking stuff. So, again, it's, it's like one of those places where I feel the revolution could be the most extreme thing if the banks fail, but yet all those people got their money from SBB, the depositors, but none of us can get our money back. And it made me start thinking of how World War II times came on how, how people already I saw in all the comments on Twitter and stuff, right? It started to be like, let the fucking Silicon Valley piece of shit liberals just fucking die, right? What's the difference between that and the Jews? in Nazi Germany. But this is setting us up to where it starts to create this idea where people are going to start being like, oh, people from Silicon Valley or people in tech, they don't care. They're all liberals. They're not all liberals. And they're not all bad people. But you can start to see how what happened the last time Uranus was here, right? You know, it's the Jews and they're the ones, right? That's the problem. When you start going, it's the fucking tech companies and they don't care about us and it's the AI and it's that. They don't care about us. It's not all those people are, are that. And, and so I feel like what's the scariest part coming is, is the banks are going to fail eventually. I can't give you that exact moment, although I told you 2024. I think that's when it really happens. But, it, it, you know, I've predicted that for seven, eight years. It's on my videos you could watch but it's one of the because they're going to keep repairing the system in capricorn always right but they're band-aids on top of band-aids but when it finally does break guess who the new jews are going to be the tech industry and i'm in tech so guess what i'm part of that group and with all the crazy saturn neptune shit people are going to fall for this more than ever especially people who practice occultism or all that or witchcraft in their view or whatever so it's going to be against the, the tech the gentiles will be the the spiritual people that aren't religious 
You have to remember that there was the healthcare that was part of SVB too, that they were funding all the new healthcare projects and all that shit. So again, it's like one of those things to where it's going to be, it was all them. It was 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 them. It's like companies like DoorDash or fucking Airbnb and all these other things. It's like, is it really that bad? You used it, right? But I, that's what I feel like the scariest wave is coming is yeah. everybody in California and tech and Silicon Valley and LA and all that are going to be the Jews. Yeah, don't, don't point the finger. No. That's very South Node Libra, right? Them, mm. them, them. Everything outside of yourself. No. Yeah. Like we have to take responsibility for ourselves. So anytime we're going to just sit and throw someone else under the bus or say it's all them, it's all this fault, it's that, 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 we're, we're not doing ourselves any favors moving forward. No, Even and these are the same people who invested in crypto that everybody wants to have crypto for, but yet they're screaming at these people to fail, yet they're the ones who provide the crypto services that make crypto happen. So it's so weird. <laughs> it's like super game. inversed. You know, the, the, the bank that provides stable coins that make people go, you know what? I want to get out of Bitcoin right now because it's going down, but I don't want to have to put my money into cash to lose money. So I'm going to go into a stable coin without that to move between different fucking currencies in crypto. Uh, uh, you'd be an idiot and you'd fail probably and you'd lose more money. Stable coins have been one of the best things that ever happened in crypto to be able to pull out and keep your money in a stable coin and then be able to move it to another fucking investment and then peek out of that and then move out and take some cast and some winnings and also to not get taxed in a certain way by keeping it in a stable coin. Like people don't realize that other side, I also understand the side of people feeling like that they're unfair, but that's the part of the world, right? California is where all the tech is. If you're not into tech and you're in Hoboken, Texas, and there's not a lot of tech there, even though there actually is in Texas, so we've got to pick somewhere else like Montana, right? You can't be mad because you're not part of that because you choose not to be part of that. Like it's, it's one of those things to where that the demonization of who and what when it's the bank, it wasn't the people in the bank, but at the same time, is it not, it's kind of not fair that the fucking feds are going to bail out the people who are in that bank. And if they don't bail out all of us, if that were to happen to all of us, that's where it's going to get fucking dicey. And I almost feel like they're setting that up on purpose, right? Some uh, New York Post came out, to, or New York Times today came out and said, well, it's part of the woke California thing where if you're a big cup company, like a, you're a C company, a corporation, that you have to have a woman and you have to have somebody that's, you know, of LGBTQ and all that on the board. And so they pointed that out, that in California, when they made the change for SCV Bank, that they added some women and they added some people from that community on, and that's why it failed. Now, I'm not saying that's true, right? And then they started to call it a white supremacist New York Times, right? But it's like one of those things where it's like, well, what, what, what stuff is actually to where we're forcing diversity and does it actually equate to like smart? Same thing in the military, same thing in all these other places. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that these are things that are being talked about and that they're being looked at, right? Like if, in California, you're forced to, if you go that big of a company, to have to have an equal amount of, you know, you have to have a certain amount of women on board and have to have certain people that are misrepresented. They have to be in decisions that make the decisions for the corporation and other people's money. So not, not based off the merit if they're good or not. You know what I mean? Like just based off their gender or what they identify with sexually or their skin, right? So like that's getting to where this that, that that's where i feel like the fire is more than oh my god we're gonna lose all the money the fire is in who's gonna be the evil ones that's exactly what happened in in nazi germany and it was because the bank problems and it was because of financial collapse that hitler rose up and pointed at a certain group of people which in this case you're already seeing it at the tech
So, and you, and you can say you don't agree with their woke ways and all that, but that doesn't make them bad people enough to kill that, that you know, like, you got to remember that. Because you're also throwing me in that boat. I've been in the tech industry. I've worked. Venture capital is what helped me build the first app. If it wasn't for a VC group that I, did it, that I went through, I would have not been able to create the Leo King app. And even though we shared, I can't, I, it doesn't matter. It's just like, that's one of those things where it's a 50-50 thing. They own the app. I own my trademark. And, we, and, and they helped me make it happen for four years until when I finally decided to leave and get out of the contract and it got a little messy and I had to switch and make my own platform and build this place on my own. But it was one of those things to where I wouldn't have been able to get there without that. And they're not bad people at all. They're good people. But, you know, it, got, it gets weird and all those kind of, you know, eighth house gets sloppy when it comes with money. So, you know, they're going to build up the enemy and who's the savior? That's Pluto. And right now it looks like they're trying to show, which we all know is not true, Secretary Yellen and the Fed as the saviors. And the bad people are bankers. And the bad people are tech people. That's very Pluto and Aquarius. It's no longer the bankers of real estate and all that shit, right? Now it's the bankers of tech and startups. It's kind of scary. You know, because whoever's going to be the hero is the closest representation of Hitler. Because when Pluto came into Aquarius in 1777, it was Uranus in Gemini. That's different than having it with Uranus in Taurus, which brings back the Pluto-Uranus square that we've been going through th since 2012 through 2015, and that is coming back. We have to remember that technically the Pluto-Uranus square didn't end until 2018, then it came back, and it wasn't until 2019, 2020, 2021, 2022 that we had a break from Pluto-Uranus. It's coming back. And this one's coming back in fixed signs. And now it's going to fixate on who's the person who's bad, who we need to break away from, and we need to do it. It's going to be nuts. People keep forgetting the Pluto Uranus score is coming back in 10 days. And 2012 through 2015, where a lot of the secrets understand a Pluto Uranus square, that goes back to the 64 65 conjunction of Pluto Uranus, right? That was in opposition to Saturn and Chiron. So it's like, this is gnarly shit. So it's much deeper than, you know, if you see some person online being like, this is where to put your money, put it in crypto, put it in Bitcoin, put it in gold, put it in silver, put it in this, put it in this bank, put it in that bank. Blah, blah, blah. Focus on your spiritual self and your mission. And make sure that everything in your mission, everything that you're connected to is really fueling your mission. Or are they holding you back? Or is it holding you back? You know? You gotta be honest. Taurus is honest. It knows who's the worker who's not showing up on the farm. You know? It knows what piece of equipment isn't working anymore. You know, but Scorpio doesn't want to see that. Scorpio's like, well, the sex is good, or, you know, I don't want to lose that. I don't want to have to go through this change because that's going to be harder. The change is going to be harder. That's when you know you're in a bad place. You can't be afraid of it all falling apart because that'll take you to, to paradise, believe it or not. Whatever you're too emotionally attached to, I don't want to go through that change. I have nowhere to go next. Probably where you need to look where the problem is, not so much your bank. So, well, yeah. No, I'm with you. Great advice. I don't have anything to add to it. Well, it was great. Make sure you find Brian Fixed Air Moon. He's on YouTube. He's on Instagram. He's on Twitter. But I think your Twitter's what? It's I always get that one wrong. No, Twitter, that's all Fixed Air Moon. Oh, it's all Fixed Air Moon. Yep. And High Vibe TV, 
and uh, my Pluto Masterclass on High Vibe TV, or you can find me as Leo King too below, but High Vibe is where it's all at. That's where everything is. Even um, I went really deep into all the Palladian channelings I had done for all the years and said that it would be cut off. It's finally opening the gate again. I talk about some of the mothership stuff. Be on High Vibe. It's not here on YouTube. Appreciate you all. Good to see you, Brian. Um, whatever you need, we're all here. You can find us at High Vibe or you can find Brian at Fixed Air Moon. Adios. Adios. This is High Vibe TV, the uncensored, guided, and community-based video TV network with content recorded and live streamed from the world-famous High Vibe TV studios. High Vibe TV delivers daily, weekly, and special programs focused on astrology, spirituality, history, community, and more. This is not your run-of-the-mill astrology and tarot. This is the future of spirituality, illuminating new ways the collective can step into the dawning of this exciting new dimension. The highest vibe is truth, and the truth always prevails. Download our awesome app on the Apple and Android stores so you don't miss our notifications with special spiritual insights curated to the energy of the universe. Search for us on your TV with our exciting TV apps on Apple TV and Roku. Catch our vibe on your computer where you can join in on the live chat with our amazing community and blog. Watch spirituality like you've never seen before. Download our apps or go to highvibe.tv. Subscribe now.